and thanks for joining us for our fifth Throwing Your Parents Under the Bus podcast. I'm Jane Johnson, and I am here because when it comes to teaching my own teens to drive, I didn't know what I didn't know, and that was a big mistake. Fortunately, or unfortunately, I met Mike, who's a veteran crash investigator, after both my sons crashed cars, but I am very happy to know him and spread the word about how well he can teach your teen to drive. So with that said, Mike, how are you doing? I am doing great, and um, don't throw your sons under the bus. They just had a little mishap. <laughs> well, we're so. fortunate that that's all it is, but it did cost a lot of money. Yes, it does. <laughs> Totaling cars is not cheap. We're all thankful they're still here. So That's right. I am very much. That's why I'm here as well. I want to make sure more kids or all kids are still alive um, after driving. So anyway, um, I guess you're here today and I'm grateful for that because you use your savvy driving skills to keep teens alive. And also uh, with us today is, of course, social media expert and the person that calls through our student enrichment observations to find fodder for this podcast. How are you doing, Natasha? I'm doing good, surviving, teaching my son to drive as well, thanks to Mike. That's going well, I take it. It is, it is. All right. Lots of Mike says, I'm sure. Lots of that. Lots of throwing your parents under the bus. That's right. That's right. But if it makes them better drivers, I guess that's okay. Yes. Anyway, the three of us have assigned dozens of real life enrichment activities to hundreds, if not thousands of students who need to complete these assignments with their parents in order to pass our classes. So you see, students must perform these specific activities with their parents and then send us their observations. And of course, over the years, we have collected a lot of these observations and uh, we use them on this podcast. And for instance, on this episode, we'll discuss steering wheel dilemma, clapping while driving, and the value of the hard break. Natasha, you want to start us up with the first steps observation? Yes, I do. The first one comes from Aiden in Owatonna, Minnesota. When exploring the dashboard, he saw the reason behind keeping his hands away from the airbag, especially in the event of an accident. However, he finds it awkward when reaching for the turn signal. So, my turn. Yes, yes. Your turn. How, and we want you to help is yes. a dilemma. <laughs> yes, Aiden, I happen to have a steering wheel here to help you, okay? Mine doesn't have an airbag, let's just picture your airbag there. So I'm gonna kind of turn around a little bit here. I'm just trying to help you. So if you keep your hands down at the eight and four, the way the, the book says nine, three, eight, and four. Um, again, in a prior podcast, I said, I don't like the nine and three, but the nine and three, you are right by your signal is right there. So you actually could just, I mean, you can still have your hands on the wheel, but at eight and four, Aiden, all you've got to do is, is open up your hand and reach up and you will be able to do a right signal, okay? Slide your hand up, open it up, and you can do a left signal. Very, very simple, all right? So if you just sat even on the dinner table in a chair and get a plate, a dinner plate, and make it your steering wheel, and once you feel good with this, it works. Just reach up, down, or left, up, or right, and your hand will go right back down to where it's at. So. Um, and then before you actually get out and start driving and doing all that, sit in the car in a parking lot and just start turning the wheel and just, you will see how it feels okay. You will smooth it out. Um, but that, you know, great observation. Thank you. Um, because we, we will help a lot of students with that. It's awkward when you begin. So, but that will help you out. That's great. Practice makes perfect as you mm -hmm. will say as well. <laughs> All mm -hmm. right, Natasha? Yeah, this, this one was too funny not to share. So Mariana in Rochester says that she learned from her, what she learned from her dad is don't clap along to a song while driving. He drove into a ditch that way. <laughs> wow, okay, so <laughs> again, guys, listen, so this can get a little complicated and I'll try and I'll try and make it where it's 
but you know, I'll make it good. First of all, when we go down a road, your road is tapered from the center down to the shoulders. The reason it does that is, is to shed water. So our cars don't hydroplane in heavy rains and we lose control and end up in ditches or head on collisions, all right? When you go into a left curve, it's usually not banked this way, it's banked down this way. Your momentum is going out so the water will go this way. But if I go into a left curve and clap, take my hand, I'm gonna shoot off into the right ditch, okay? More dangerous if we go into a right curve. So now the street is banked down to the right, which means my momentum is going into oncoming traffic. And if I clap at that as a car is coming, then I'm gonna crash the car, all right? So going straight down the road and there's no cars, if I take my hands off the steering wheel, to clap, the car is automatically gonna drift down to the right, almost always. If your front end is out of alignment, all right? Meaning where, so if you let you go of your wheel, your car should slowly start moving to the taper of the road, we'll say. But if you have a wheel out of alignment or balance, it could suck you quite quickly. So that's probably what happened, dad, decided to clap at a very, let's say, higher speed than normal. And the car then went like this, and he probably went to grab the wheel, overreacted, and sounds like we lost control. Thankfully, dad is still alive because you were able to write that enrichment into us. That's we crazy. do learn from them. You know, sometimes you forget that you're driving, I guess. <laughs> it was a good song. We should have find out what song it was. I know, we should find out. <laughs> yeah, we, we should, because if then we you're just happy and you that. know, clap your hands. <laughs> well, you have to clap your hands. You're happy. That's right. That's right. All right. Well, thanks, Mike. That was actually very good information. No, no dancing in the car. That's right. You see that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, Natasha, we have another one. Yes, we do. This one is Matthew from Invergrove Heights. He shares his experience with the hard break. A couple of years ago, while riding with my parents during rush hour, my dad had to hard break because a car suddenly changed lanes and pulled in front of us. Unfortunately, the driver of the vehicle behind us was distracted and rear-ended our van. Fortunately, my dad saw it coming and warned us before impact. Thankfully, no one was hurt. You know, oh, it, it, rear end accidents have become, I mean, he talked about a while ago, and they have become more violent in today's world, the 2024 world, um, this new century, because we have too many distractions going on in everybody's car. And if you allow distractions to take over your driving, they will. They absolutely will consume you and put you and your family at risk and put a whole bunch of other people at risk. So I can't say it enough, people. We need to become smarter drivers. It can wait. It can wait. And the number one distraction is this cell phone. I mean, it's this is it. And it's getting to be where it doesn't take anything to go down a road and look around you, and you're gonna see 16-year-olds uh, on phones, you're gonna see 80-year-olds on phone, all right? The fact of the matter is that's all fine and dandy until we have an accident. We always think it's gonna happen to somebody else. But let's get back to Matthew's um, comment. They got rear-ended, all right? In our curriculum, we talk about when you go to stop behind another car. First of all, we talk about, we always leave ourselves an exit. The ditch is our best friend. Be careful, parents and students, trapping yourself in middle lanes, okay? Trapping yourself on the left side. 
where you have no exit. I personally, if I do a behind the wheel lesson, I try and keep students to always keep your car moving. Look far enough ahead and see the red light and slow down sooner. Because when your car is moving, you have a, almost an impossible time that you will be rear-ended. It's when you're stopped or you're gonna hard brake. So if we see the big gap closing in front of us sooner, we can slow down sooner, which allows the car behind us to react to what our deceleration is or whatever uh, sooner. I always, when I come up to stop at somebody, if I stop at a red light, and I try not to, I always try and stop two or three car lengths sooner where my car is down to a two, three mile an hour roll, all right? And I'm rolling. And then the car behind me will come up and they will see, it's easier to see my car when it's moving than it is when it's stopped, all right? And then they will see me. And once I get their attention, I don't worry about it anymore. And I'll roll up and remember in episodes prior, we talked about when you stop behind another car, we always see those back tires touching the ground. Not see them, we see them touching the ground, which gives you a nice gap like this. Then as that car comes up behind you, quickly, you get to just release your brake a little bit, roll a little bit more, and then squeeze down again. So it gives you a really a nice, a nice um, space in between you and the driver. Um, and when we brake hard, People behind us are not seeing what we're seeing. I'm glad your dad had time to warn you guys that we're about to be rear-ended. But the, the problem about being rear-ended is, is we have no airbags behind us. And the back and whiplash to the neck in our back uh, becomes very, very violent at higher speeds. Um, so it has, become, it has become a scary accident. Uh, in this new generation of driving, we'll say. So, you know what? Pay attention and, and always keep this in mind. When you're driving in this environment of a whole bunch of cars, get paranoid on what are you going to do in a disaster time? And where are you going to go? Are you going to freeze to the moment? Or are you going to be the smarter driver that might take two or three minutes longer to get to where you're going, but you've left room to exit to the right? You always have that room. I want you to look at that as you drive. The benefits you always have to the right of your road and the benefits you have to the left are not very often. So, you know, hopefully that helped you guys out, but but I think that was a very, very important um, enrichment right there so well again Mike thanks for your knowledge and all of your um, insights in uh, uh, to answer some of these questions that we have um, I think we're done for today is that right Natasha yep done over on my end all right well with that said then uh, before we sign off we want to thank you for joining us today we really appreciate it and um, again please we love it when you email us with your thoughts or your own observations or stories that you can maybe help us so that we can continue to help other drivers um, you can go to drive safe ride safe at gmail.com and if you're interested in uh, listening to more of our podcasts, you can go to uh, buzzsprout.com forward slash 2361962. We have that on the screen, of course. And then um, we also have our podcast um, at our drivesaferidesafe.com forward slash podcast forward slash link. Um, and that's on our website. Or you can go to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash drive safe ride safe one and that's not that's the number not the name and um you can subscribe to that uh it is free until next time remember to what drive safe and I'm safe ride, ride safe I one day to, we'll get I it i need to do this like like a conductor <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. you'll do this and let's try that okay and until next time remember 
Drive safe. Drive safe. Drive safe. Now we're never going to get it. <laughs> you know, it's okay. We still get you and we love you. All right. Thank you very much. And this has been episode five of Throwing Your Parents Under the Bus podcast. Thanks again for joining us and we hope to see you next time. Bye. Let's, let's, let's get them, students. Come on. <laughs>